Good morning. Welcome to uh, Monday Morning Devotions. It uh, It's Monday morning, as if that makes much difference anymore. <laughs> but there it is. I, uh, I keep telling you what day it is, as much for myself as for anyone else. Uh, so <laughs> don't think I think you're stupid, okay? Because I don't. Uh, I know myself. <laughs> anyway... Today, as we uh, get ready to start into our devotional time, uh, a couple of things we uh, want to certainly lift up our list of, uh, of prayer needs and add to it a person who is going to be, on the 14th, going through some uh, significant surgical procedures. And uh, they prefer to remain anonymous. Also, another person who is looking to have, have some... Uh, uh, surgical needs met as well and not really sure about what or when or or how that's exactly going to work at this point because it's kind of it's kind of crazy out there in the hospitals right now so anyway uh, a couple more unnamed that uh, that's four definite unnamed concerns and uh, and our other uh, list that is uh, is named and uh, so as we get ready to uh, go to the Lord in prayer uh, if you have anything that you want to lift up, you are more than welcome to do that. Uh, I'll pick up on it if you punch it in, uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll include that. Certainly want to continue to uh, keep uh, um, Faye and Leslie on our prayers, and uh, uh, Nancy McLoon and others, okay? Don't see anything else coming up, so let's go ahead and get rolling, shall we? <clears throat> the theme for this week is Chosen by God. And actually, I started this last Monday sitting under a tree, and uh, I messed up uh, because this is the sixth Sunday of Easter coming, and I uh, skipped the page. Anyway, so here's the invocation. Almighty God, you have created us, called us, chosen us to be your people. We wait now to receive your word of guidance and blessing. Grant unto us ears to hear, eyes to see, and faith to respond to your love and leadership. In the name of Christ, amen. All right, today we're going to be reading from Isaiah chapter 63, and we'll be reading verses 7 through 9. So if you have your Bible with you and you'd like to take a look, Isaiah 63, 7 to 9. And uh, again, I'm going to be reading from the New International Version here. Okay. I will tell of the kindness of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised, according to all the Lord has done for us. Yes, the many good things he has done for the house of Israel. According to his compassion and many kindnesses, he said, Surely they are my people, children who will not be false to me. And so he became their savior. In all their distress, he too was distressed. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. May God add his blessing to this reading from his word. Um, you know, one of the things, again, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that keeps kind of getting repeated, I think. And, and one of the things that is consistently repeated in, in our studies is the need to, um, to tell the kindness of the Lord. Um, we, you know, we don't, we don't do that enough. We don't talk about it with one another. We, uh, we don't uh, lift it up as much as we ought to uh, if we lift it up at all. There used to be in most services a time of witnessing, you know, where people would witness to what God had done in their lives. And I think a lot of, uh, a lot of different denominations, a lot of backgrounds uh, did this. And biblically, it's something that is so clearly called for that you sort of wonder how it got lost by the wayside and and I think that uh, one of the things that is especially true of that 
is the fact that at a time when we're going through our worst issues is the time when we most need, we most need, to lift up the kindnesses of the Lord. To uh, recognize what it is that he is doing and has done and anticipate what it is that he is going to do. And every day we need to be doing that. And and again, it's something that um, if somebody starts witnessing, people sort of gasp in awe as if somehow they're amazed at the reality that God acts in the world in which we live and in the lives that we live in that world. And, and it really kind of flabbergasts me. Uh, this morning... Um, Kathy ordered a, uh, a new microwave. Uh, the microwave that we have is uh, about 36 years old. It still works, uh, but it doesn't have quite the zip it once had. <laughs> and, and further, you can't really count on it 100%. Because sometimes you'll put something in, and you'll put it in for a time that uh, the last cup was plenty warm, and you use the same amount of time, and the, the next cup comes out, and it's not same. So it definitely is kind of hitting a point where, you know, it's sort of like, yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, it still works, but uh, it's not quite where, you know, we'd, we'd like it to be. And I, I always remember, and this, it was a, it was kind of a, has stood the test of time as one of the funniest things ever. When I found out I, a good friend bought the microwave that we have now, and then he was uh, in the Navy chaplaincy, and uh, and when they shipped him out, he headed for Napoli, Italy. And if you know anything about Europe, you'll know that they don't use electricity in exactly the same way. Uh, and I'm no electrician, so don't count on me to explain it to you. But anyway, uh, it's a different it's a different wattage, it's a different flow, all those kind of things. So anyhow, um, he could not take it with him, and so he gave it to us before he left. And uh, it was it was probably a couple of years old at that point, um, two or three at the most. And uh, when he had gotten it, um, I used to ride with him down to Asbury Seminary for pastor school, which was just a wonderful experience. But he had just gotten it about a month beforehand. And when I came and I spent the night at his house, and then we took off the, early the next morning to go on down because he lived in Ohio. And and so. He was talking about, oh, this microwave, oh my gosh, what it'll do, it just is amazing. And that was back in the days when they were first coming out. This was a uh, top-of-the-line JCPenney microwave. And uh, and he was showing me what it would do. He talked about what it would do, and I thought, I wonder if Kathy would like something like that, because I could see that being handy. We'd never had a microwave before, didn't have a clue, you know. And, uh, and so I asked her when I got home, I said, hey, have you ever thought about a microwave? Uh, Travis says this and this and this. It's the guy we named our son after. And, uh, and she goes, no, I, I just, I can't even imagine using that. I never would use that. And uh, so it's just a you know, few, couple, three years at most later, he delivers it. And I think Kathy was probably, if anything, a little apprehensive because it was big. It took up a lot of space and a lot of counter space. We didn't have tons of counter space. So, you know, I, th I think she was sort of like, ah, man, that's just going to get in the way. And I think she put words to that a couple times. Um, within two days of having it in the house, I said to her, I said, you know, if that ever goes bad, I will have another microwave in the house before the, the day is done. <laughs> and, uh, and she goes, you'd better. <laughs> so that's how handy, you know, this microwave became. And, uh, and so I compare that with, with today as this is supposed to be delivered. And, and she keeps updating me because it might be delivered while we're in the midst of this all of a sudden. You know, it was, it was going to be delivered Tuesday. Then it was going to be delivered Monday, sometime maybe right around noon or you know, 11 to noon. Now suddenly it might get here, you know, well, uh, in this 10 to 1030 time frame. And, and uh, she wanted to clear stuff out in case they were delivering it. And I said, it's a microwave. It's not a refrigerator. And... Uh, so I'm, I'm probably less excited about it than she is, but she is genuinely excited about this new microwave. 
And uh, and some of you right now would like to reach out through the screen and slap me for not, you know, for, uh, and I'm not mocking her, okay? But I, I'm, I'm saying this to, to make a point. Now, I've, I've been mocking her, but not, not here. I'm not doing it here, okay? And so, but to make the point, you know, it, it is, it, as she is expecting this new microwave, we have one that works. It doesn't necessarily always work well, but we have one that works, but she's getting a new one. And, uh, and, and I think it's a good idea after 36 years. Um, and, and so she's quite excited about the, the newness of what's, you know, what's coming and the fact that it will probably work very well. Uh, and, uh, and so, and she can, you know, kind of count on it. Uh, and, and she needs at least one thing in the house right now that she can count on. But anyway, um, so I, I look at that, you know, and, and I will tell of the kindness of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised. And I think initially there was that element in which she just, she couldn't see it. Ah, it's, I'd never use it. Oh, nah, don't bother. I, no, I don't, you know, and, and now she is so excited that she wanted to clear out space so it could get in the house quicker, I think, you know. And uh, um, I may pay for this. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I, I love it. And, it, and it's, it's an absolutely perfect example of this because there was a time, and woe be unto us if, this, if that time extends to now, when we do, did not and perhaps do not celebrate the kindness of the Lord in the way that we ought to. How often do we make the way open for the Lord to work, you know, in our lives? How often do we eagerly anticipate what it is new that God, God is going to do in increase over what he has done in the past? You know, how often do we talk about it? How often do we get excited about it? I'm the idiot here, you know, uh, and seriously, it's like, it's like Kathy's excited about something. And, and it's a good thing to be excited about. How often are we actually excited about what it is that God has done, what it is that God is doing, and what it is that God will do? And do we talk about it? Do we, do we get excited about it? Do we share any of that? And, and you know what will be unto us if we don't? Why? Well, because you're missing out on the fun. That's the very least of what it is. Why shouldn't you celebrate what God has done? Why shouldn't you laugh about it once in a while? Why shouldn't you tell people about what God has done in your life? And it isn't like, well, this is what God's done in my life. That's too bad. You don't have any of that going on. Because you know what? The fact of the matter is that most of us have got God's work going in our lives, even if it is that work of drawing us to him in the first place. You know, that's the beauty of what God has done. I... You know, sometimes people are going through stuff that is really tough. And if, as a Christian, you can say, uh, yeah, you know what? I, I went through something similar. I'm not saying it's the same. I'm not saying I understand exactly where you're coming from. But I know for me, this is what, you know, what happened, what God did, and uh, and how I got through it. And because I, I think it's important for people to know uh, about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I love that phrase from the Psalms. It's, I believe I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Why do I believe I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Because I've seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And God doesn't change. God is the same yesterday and today and tomorrow. There is not going to be any change. If God has acted in the past. Guess what? He's going to continue to act. And, and so, you know, we really need to be giving thanks to God more often and and more verbally you know that's the thing um and i realize that you just you know you're not going to walk up to somebody on the street and say hey guess what god did for me today and because they're going to turn around and run all right if they're smart you know <laughs> it's a it's a no no i don't know no no i want to talk to you you know even if they're christians they're going but we're not used to doing that and we're not used to hearing that so the fact is that we really need to be sharing some of those wonderful things that God has done, is doing, and that we anticipate that he is going to do. Because you know what? He is going to do it. 
And he has done it, and he is doing it now. So, uh, you know, we, we can go through the worst times, times that, you know, may be potentially leading up to the end of this life for us, but it does not mean at any point in time that God has not been at work in your life. Or that he is not going to be. Yeah, are you anticipating the resurrection? Then guess what? God is going to be doing something in your life that is really powerful. Have you cleared the way? You know, have you cleared the way? I, uh, Kathy wanted me to move the guitar case, and of course I joked with her about it and uh, stuff because it was like, listen, I'm going to be carrying the thing in here. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to roll it in. I don't think. Maybe, I, you know, but uh, I kind of don't think so. And, and so. Uh, you know, getting all this stuff out of the way. And yet, you know, after I took my breakfast stuff out to the sink, uh, I came back through and I put moved a bunch of guitars and stuff and shoved the chair back that was sitting there at the end of the, uh, of the, uh, oh, yeah, exercise uh, walkway there. And I got things out of the way so that it can, it can come in because I know that was important to her. You know, God knows what's important to you. And, uh, and, and I think that one of the things we need to do is clear the way, you know, clear the way within ourselves so that God can act and can get the, uh, get the new microwave through the house and on that kitchen counter, you know. So think about that today. What can you do to clear the way for God's action? And, and what I would say to you is one of, the, one of the greatest ways you clear the way for God's action is to talk about how God has acted at, in the past and what you're anticipating and what you would like. You know, have you got friends who are in Christ enough that you could talk about that? You know, sit down and say, hey, um, you know, this is what's going on in my life. This is what I would really like to see God do. I know he's going to do something. And I know it's going to be right. This is what I'd like to see. What do you think? And, and, to, and to bounce that stuff back and forth with a Christian friend who understands... And you know what? There might be a whole lot more Christian friends out there that understand if we would share once in a while about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So, I will tell of the kindnesses of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised, according to all that the Lord has done for me. Will you? I hope so. You know, again, you're in lockdown mode, for many of you. Um, if you haven't explored this realm with your spouse, if you're if you're married and if you're living with your spouse and in this situation, why don't you try talking about that this morning? If you're by yourself, why don't you call somebody as an encouragement? Because you know what? As you talk about God's encouragement in your life, you're going to bring an encouragement into their lives and they are going to bring more encouragement back into yours. That's how God works. It's one of the ways. Okay, give it a shot. And now may the peace of God fill our hearts, our minds, and our activities all this day long. Amen. And uh, my friend Ron is on, so I'm just going to say, and I know you will all agree with me, that uh, as he's waiting for the results of his scan uh, on uh, last week, uh, Ron, we... Uh, we don't just wish you the best. We pray God's blessing on you. And uh, we will continue to pray and lift you up because we love you. All right, everybody, have a great day today. And, uh, and make sure you go and tell somebody what God has done. Right? All right. Bye-bye.